Okay, everybody, we're going to start with matrices. <clears throat> matrices is a brand new unit, uh, and we're going to learn just some of the vocabulary for them. We're going to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and not really divide them. I'll tell you about that. Uh, we're going to be uh, representing mathematical objects and equations, like basically take equations and put them into matrices. Uh, and then we're going to use matrices to solve systems of equations. That's a lot. So first off, this is a matrix, uh, and we should talk about it in terms of rows and columns. This way is rows. So this one has two rows, and you always go row first, then column. It's really important that you keep these straight. The rows are going across like the 6, 4, 24. That's a row. Okay, so this thing has two rows, and then columns are like what holds up buildings, right? So that is a column, and those are three columns. So this is a two by three matrix. So that's one of the first things you've got to know is how to describe them in terms of rows and columns. All right, so that's a two by three. Uh, what would a three by two look like? Well, that would be like, that would have how many rows by how many columns? Well, how many rows does it have? One, two, three rows by two columns. That'd be a three by two. All right, so uh, each little piece is called an element of the matrix. That right there is a little element. All right. So uh, there's, again, a better, more pretty description of the rows and the columns. Uh, and we're going to go on to this page. So, right now, I think it's best for you to not just listen to me, that you actually write. So, here, underneath each of these, would you put how many rows and how many columns? And uh, we'll just pause for a second while you write those in, and then I'll uh, reveal the answers. Okay, so this one had one, two, three, four rows. I like to think of it that way. That's four rows. And then it had one, two, three columns holding up the building. That's a four by three. This one has four by two. This one uh, has two by one, two, three, four columns holding up the building. Uh, this one's got three by two. And if it's the same, like a three by three, then that's called a square matrix. All right. So uh, you could call these little elements, these little guys right here, uh, and they've got it labeled there with an A11. That's not an 11, it's a 11. That means it's row one, column one. So like right there, do you get that means that that is in row two, column three. It's always RC, like remote control. Row first, then column. So that is two row, that's in spot. This little spot right here is in row two and it's in column three. Okay. So uh, if, if you, I, I don't feel like this is worth your time. They're just gonna say like, you know, what is that? Uh, that is in row one, column one, et cetera. A little too easy for me. Adding and subtracting matrices now getting down to some brass tacks. This and this are the first elements of the respective matrices. So they just go together. So three and four make seven. Don't overthink this. It's just that one goes together. Those two go together and make 10. And these two go together and make 17. And so there's my answer. I bet you can tell that this one goes with this one. And you're going to subtract them. So one minus three, negative two. So when you're doing adding and subtracting, you're always doing it with the same size matrix. And this one was a two by three matrix, and so is this. For adding and subtracting, they have to be the same size or it just won't work. All right, now on to scalar multiplying. Basically, you're scaling it up. You're saying, I want it to be three times bigger. So I bet you it's not hard to figure out that you times them all by three. Zero times three, two times three, and negative four times three. That's all you gotta do. Here you'd multiply this by negative 1.5 in some almost like distributing. You'd multiply it into all four spots. 
then you would multiply these all by four, and then you'd have a new matrix here, and a new matrix here, and you would just add the results. And again, you'd add the first spot and the first spot, row one, column one on both of them, and they would go in your answer. All right, so when you put a number in front of it, you just multiply it by everything inside the matrix. Now we've got uh, taking this and putting it into this. Do you see how they've lined it up with X and then Y and then Z and then the whole number, otherwise known as the constant? Okay, they have to put them in order like that. And if any of them weren't there, like if this didn't have an X, you would say it had zero Xs. So you just want to have an X for each of them. So again, if there was no X on the last equation, you wouldn't just leave it blank. You would say that it has zero in the X spot. Okay, so all of these numbers here, I bet you can tell they just get transported over there. Three goes there, negative one goes there, six goes there. So it's not hard once you get this all organized. The hard part is getting them organized so that all the x's are first, all the y's are second, all the z's are third, and all the constants are last. But then you just have to copy them over. Like that is negative one. Of course, we know there's a one in there, so that's negative one, negative one, and nine. See, that's not too tough. Now, uh, if we were gonna make this into a matrix, did they, I'd first check, did they line it all up so the X's and the Y's are first? Yep, they did. All right, so then you're gonna make like this, a matrix that has a 22 and a one and a 232. I didn't need myself enough room here. And then this one, I'd have a 15 and a 10 and a 270. So why don't you take a second, you've been listening for too long, see if you can make the matrix for that. And if there's anything that's out of line, like out of order, you want to check for that. And I already checked it for you. There's nothing out of order. Like if they had swapped and put the Y and the Z in the wrong spot, you know, then you'd want to switch those around. But these are in order, X, Y, and Z. So see if you can make the matrix for that. I'll pause while you give that a shot. Okay, we're back, and this would have been a one for that. That would be a negative one, then a one, and then a 10. And then it's three, one, two, 34. And then it's a negative five, two, negative one for that, and a negative 14. Okay, so you say, okay, I can copy numbers over into a matrix big deal but what's cool is that you can take that and use it to solve so that you can solve this system and figure out what what's x what's y and what's z and that's what's super powerful here um all right i'm gonna i think this is just more of making matrices so it feels a little too easy to me one one zero one, one, three, one, negative one, two. Yep. All right. Now they're gonna ask you to go backwards and I think you'd be able to do this. This is the X, this is the Y, this is the Z, and then it equals four. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to use matrices to represent coordinates on a graph. Well, these are, you know, points, clearly these are points, and I could put them into a matrix. So if, for example, you know what? Honestly, I know that you're not gonna have to use this one. Uh, so I'm trying to keep this lesson short for you for tomorrow uh, so that you'll have more time to work in class. Thankfully, I know that, that the sub that you're gonna have is knows how to do matrices. So uh, we don't have to do this part. So we're gonna skip over that part. And you have a Schoology quiz uh, on matrices. You normally group in groups of two. You should know who those are. And I'd appreciate it if you would work together with that person.
to finish, and then you'll walk out of here today with no homework as long as you finish up that Schoology quiz. And that's all I got for you for today.